Hi guys, how's it going? So we're out in the front of our property and I'm getting ready to plant up these uh, big black square planters. And I've really never planted them up with anything for spring. I usually just save it uh, for summer plants. And then I usually do some kind of like Christmas arrangement with lights and things. But I thought it would be fun to pack these full of bulbs this year. Um, so I've already got them all emptied out. We had the vertigo grass with diamond mountain euphorbia and supertunia bubblegum around the, the outside. And it was a really beautiful display. Those vertigos were just so striking. And of course the supertunia bubblegum shows up really well. Um, so I do need a centerpiece. And this time of year, it is kind of tough to find two big, I wanted something evergreen and maybe a topiary, but to find two of them that match this time of year is a little bit difficult. So I've been eyeballing these obelisks down at my parents' garden center for quite a long time, and they're beastly. Like these are actually handmade, um, very heavy. Uh, so I thought that these would be really perfect because I love the style of them. We can toss some Christmas lights on them later on and, uh, and some greens around the base for Christmas time. And then all the while, these bulbs will just be sitting in the soil waiting for spring to come. So um, let me show you all of these supplies that I'm gonna be using. And then I'm going to spray paint this pot. I already did that one over there, just to spruce it up a little bit. I went down to the garden center and I just picked they, out of what they had left just some really pretty colors. So like the first one, the tallest one that I'm gonna put in is a tulip called Daydream. It's like a yellow with an apricot tinge and I think that that will show up really nicely. Next layer down will be this pink impression tulip. So that we've got 24 inches, 22 inches, and then these will be next. This is a tulip called Calypso. Look at that. I like the multicolor. This is like a La Belle Epoque, but just in a single form in terms of color. And then the Thalia Narcissus daffodil right here, which is just a really delicate white daffodil. And then all the way around the outside of the pot, I'm gonna put this muscari. So this one's called Mountain Lady. It's kind of a blue, light blue with a white tip on the blooms. And these grow about eight inches. So I should have some really beautiful layering going on. Um, I've got my bulb tone, which I will add to the soil. And then I've got my, before I plant, then I've got my soil to top everything off. But this is what I'm using right here. This is just Rust-Oleum satin finish black. And we're just gonna go ahead and paint this pot up real quick. I did take a brush after these and I brushed off any like big chunks, but I don't really worry about cleaning anything else off of them because the paint just covers it. Oh, I'm running out. Running out, running out, running out. Oh, I'm glad I brought a second can out. You might notice that all the hay racks are gone. So the past year, was it like last winter, we left them all out on the fence and it, it was fine. And it was nice that they were still there in the spring so we didn't have to move anything around, but it sure does make for a nice clean look to have them removed. We do, do still need to come along. We'll probably use a magic eraser just to clean off any of this extra stuff. It's just like dirt mainly. So what I do when all of the paint is dry is I'll just come up along with my shoe and just kind of rough the gravel up like this. And it'll make all of the like painted rocks because I don't lay anything down kind of disappear. It works pretty well. Okay, so both of the containers are painted and pretty dry. So I'm gonna add my bulb tone into the soil first and this is the fertilizer for the bulbs. And I'm just going to do, oh, there's already a cup in here, sweet. I'm gonna do just a generous helping for the whole thing. And then I'm just gonna mix it into the top couple inches of soil. Now this is really nice and fluffy. Um, I don't know if I already said, I already filled it with fresh soil and then I've got more to top it off. But the nice part about it is that like tulips and daffodils need to go down about five or six inches, but it's so fluffy that I'll be able to just push the bulbs right down into the soil. So the fertilizer really only needs to be in the top couple inches here. Okay, we're gonna go do that to the second pot. Okay, so now I'm gonna put in my obelisks. Now I will try to find a link to something similar to these. Um, these were made locally, so I don't know that I can link this exact one, but we'll find something. These are nice and heavy. I'm just gonna kind of nest them down into the soil here. I think these are just slightly over six feet. Aaron stood up next to one for scale, for size. That looks good. Let's go do the other one. Ooh, yeah, heavy. Does that look good, Aaron? Yeah. 
Is that straight up and down? Nope. nope. Leaning, it's leaning this way. It'll probably shift a little bit. I'll have to just keep my eyes on them until the soil freezes. Okay, now bulbs. So I'm gonna start with my two tulip varieties that are a little taller first, and I'm just gonna split the bulbs equally. Now these pots are gonna look a tiny bit funny um, even after I'm done with them today until I get my evergreens for the holidays put around because my branches that I'll put in like my pine boughs and things like that will come up, you know, quite far. Like they'll really fill in this container so it won't look so stark, you know, have the pot and then my tall obelisk. Um, so anyway, just wanted to explain that. I think I'm gonna start with these yellow ones first. And I'm just going to try to space them out as evenly as possible. And I'll probably have to shift things around a little bit when I get all the rest of the bulbs in. And for those of you guys who are brand new to gardening, to plant a tulip, you plant pointy side up. And that's for most, most bulbs. There are exceptions, but you can see like this is the bottom end there. This is where the roots will come out and this is where your stem will come out. And if you just cannot figure out which way to plant your bulb, just plant it on its side. Most of the time they'll find their way up. Okay, now for the pink ones. Now these are a little bit shorter, so I see I, I concentrated my taller ones kind of in the center here and toward the outside of the obelisk. And then the pink ones I'll kind of incorporate to the edges here. All right, so now I'm gonna follow up with my other bulbs. I've got the two taller varieties of tulips. So now I'm gonna go in with my daffodil and my last variety of tulips, and then I will surround it with the muscari. These are all in bags, so this will take me a little bit longer, and I'm gonna count out and make sure I have it equal. So there's eight daffodils per bag. Three, four, five, six, seven, oh, eight, that's perfect. Four bags per pot of daffodil. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three and a half bags of tulips. Okay, I'm gonna do the daffodils first. So I can do eight daffodils per side. Okay, so this is gonna take a little while. So I've got enough to do eight daffodils on each side of the obelisk. Um, and then I've got 35 total tulips. So I'll split those up and 70 muscari, which I'll probably, no, I won't concentrate. I was thinking I was gonna concentrate them on the front. Uh, but I think I'll just try to ring the whole thing. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to plant these. Um, yeah. So before I put the muscari in around the outer edge, I'm going to go ahead and get these pushed down in the soil to the depth that they need to be. And then I'll probably put a little bit of a uh, little bit of more soil on top of these. Because these are such small bulbs, like check this out. Muscari are so much smaller than these other bulbs in here. I feel like if I were to ring the whole pot with them right now, they might get a little bit disrupted. So I'm gonna do that after I plant these. So to do this, since these need to be about five or six inches deep, I am just going to push all of them down into the soil. So much easier than planting them in the landscape, let me tell ya. All right, so I'm just gonna continue to do this and then we'll put a new layer of soil on top of the whole thing and then I'll show you the muscari. All right, so I've got all the bulbs pushed down. Let's put a little bit more soil on the top and then the muscari. Oh, soil is nice. It's actually kind of nice because when I put the evergreens down in here for the winter, it'll provide a little bit of a mulch layer for these bulbs uh, because there is the fear if you plant bulbs in containers and they're not protected that it could possibly get a little tiny bit too cold for them. These are big containers and they're double walled so there's an air layer so it does provide quite a bit of insulation and so long as you don't let them completely dry out if you're in a dry area most of the time I have pretty good success with it but it is peace of mind to know that there'll be that evergreen layer for as long as I really want to keep them in here. So for the muscari I'm going to do much the same thing except I'm gonna put, I've got enough to do about 17 on two sides and 18 on the other sides. I'm just gonna space them out like this and then they need to go down about three inches. So I'll push them down like that. See on this one, muscari, same thing, pointy side up and here are the roots. You can even see some of those little roots coming out. So we want the pointy side to face up. All right, get them all covered over. Now we can go do the second pot.
stirred up. So now I'm gonna water them in. I don't have a hose nearby, so I've got a couple of watering cans um, and we don't have any rain on the forecast for the next 10 days. So like if it called for rain tomorrow, I'd probably just leave them and let the rain water them because it's so open up here. Um, but the thing is about bulbs and containers is you don't want them to dry all the way out, but you also don't want them to be too wet. So I just make it a habit to come out every couple of weeks, especially if we're having like extra windy or dry weather, and I'll give them just a little bit of water. They don't need a lot. It's just basically so that they don't dry out in the soil. So I think I'm gonna probably have to use both of these cans just to get them all watered in because the soil is completely dry. And then I'm just gonna put it in my calendar on my phone to come out and check on them. And we'll probably do another video here when we get ready to spruce these up for the holidays and add our greens and Christmas lights. And that way the whole arrangement will look complete. So anyway, I'm just gonna get these watered in and that's pretty much it for this project in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.